So in this lesson, we're going to continue with animal transport systems. In the last lesson, we kind of covered blood, uh, the different types of blood cells, uh, white blood cells and red blood cells, and how their structure is suited to their function. In this lesson, we're going to start to look a little bit at heart structure. So this is quite a short lesson, uh, and then we'll move on to blood vessels and how their structure suits their function. So we're going to be looking at the chambers of the heart, the valves, the blood flow through the heart and around the body. And we're going to look at the differences between the two sides of the heart, the four main blood vessels that are connected to the heart, and then this special artery, special blood vessel called the coronary artery. So for now, we're just going to quickly cover the, the sort of route that blood takes through the body. Um, so if we start in the heart, so the first place that blood goes to when it leaves the heart, when it's pumped out of the heart, is it heads off to the lungs. And at this point, the blood is actually not not a sort of not this color of blue, but it is a it's not the same color as a sort of crimson red that we would expect blood to be. It's a, a kind of more purpley sort of color. And you can see that if you just look at your veins and your arms, you might notice that they are a sort of blue appearance and it's actually the color of the blood. That's because at this point, the blood is deoxygenated, so it doesn't have much oxygen in it at all. So the first step is when blood arrives in the heart, it then gets pumped off to the lungs. And in the lungs, it'll, it'll be pumped out through this um, artery called the pulmonary artery. The word pulmonary indicates that it's a connection between the heart and lungs. So blood leaves the heart through the pulmonary artery and it goes to the lungs. And where, when it's in the lungs, it goes into uh, the air sacs in the lungs where it swaps carbon dioxide out for oxygen in. And when that happens, you'll remember from the last lesson that the red blood cells pick up that oxygen and the haemoglobin becomes oxyhemoglobin and it changes appearance and it becomes red. And we now see that this is oxygenated blood and the oxygenated blood is now going to have to go back to the heart for a big boost around the body. So it returns to the heart through the pulmonary vein. Pulmonary vein brings the blood into the heart. The heart then gives it a big, big push um, as it's pumped back out of the heart through the largest artery in our body called the aorta. And the aorta then branches off to the various different body parts and it's carrying this oxygenated blood with it. So that blood is going to all the body tissues. So we've just got one uh, area here, but you need to imagine that obviously this is branching off and it's, it's actually getting to all the body parts. And in the body tissues, there are more small blood vessels called capillaries, like the ones we had in the lungs. And here we have more exchange of materials. So useful things leave the blood and go into the body tissues less useful things come back into the blood to be taken away. So like carbon dioxide, urea, waste, that sort of stuff. And then eventually the blood on its way back through other body systems will join the vena cava. And then the vena cava is the largest vein in the body, which brings the blood back up to the heart. So that is the flow of blood through the body. So it's effectively going heart to lungs, heart to body, then heart to lungs, heart to body, and so on and so on. We call it a double circulatory system because there are effectively two circuits. So there's a circuit between the heart and the lungs, and there's a circuit between the heart and the body. Um, so this is the pulmonary circulation, the lungs and heart, and this is systemic circulation between the heart and body. Okay, let's take a little bit uh, more detailed look at the heart now. So this is what the heart looks like. Imagine it's a sort of cross section, it's like somebody's sliced it down the middle um, so that we can see what's inside. So the first thing to note is that there are four chambers, which are the right atrium and left atrium, right ventricle and left ventricle. So the atriums are both at the top of the heart. So that's the way that I would try and remember it. AT for atrium, AT for at the top. Okay, so right atrium, left atrium. One thing you might notice here is that when we look at this picture, it looks like right and left are the wrong way round. They're actually not. 
what you need to imagine is that this is a picture of your heart. So you would pick this picture up, turn it round and put it on your heart so that we could see it. So this is actually your right hand side and that is your left hand side. But when we look at this in the picture, it's just that it looks like it's the wrong way round. OK, it looks like we're seeing it in the mirror, the mirror image. So just remember that right and left are the, the wrong way round effectively. When you're labelling this, it, it will appear like they're the wrong way round. OK, so this is the right atrium and this is our left atrium. So blood actually enters through the right atrium, which we can see here, and it enters through this vena cava. Notice that there's two in this diagram, but it's just because obviously some blood will be returning from the head, from the brain, some from lower down the body. So there's two vena cavas into this right atrium. At the bottom of the heart, we have the ventricles. And the way that I try and remember these is they are effectively V-shaped. OK, so these are they're like their V-shaped chambers here. The ventricles are both bigger than the atriums. Um, so what happens is, if we look at the flow of blood, blood's coming in through the right atrium and it's then pushed down into the right ventricle. When it goes between the two, it has to pass through a valve. Now in this diagram, each of these valves are actually labelled and named. You do not need to know the names of them. You just need to know that there are valves and you need to know where they are. So there's a valve separating the atriums and ventricles on both sides. So we can see that one there, that one there. And then there are also valves uh, at the exits of the heart. So through the pulmonary artery and through the aorta on the, on the other side. So blood enters into the right atrium, down into the right ventricle, and then we get it pushed out through the pulmonary artery. And if you think about the sort of sound of the heartbeat, doo-doom, doo-doom. It's like two beats within a heartbeat, doo-doom. The first of those is effectively the blood being pushed from the atrium into the ventricle. And then the second of those is the blood being pushed from the ventricle out of the heart. So it's quite fast. Blood doesn't spend very long inside your heart. Um, so right ventricle and then out to the pulmonary artery, which you'll notice is branched because that is going off to the right and left lungs. So the blood then spends a little bit of time at the lungs, swapping carbon dioxide for oxygen. And when it comes back, it comes back in through here, through the pulmonary veins. And these deposit blood into the left atrium. And then again, we have our heartbeat, doo -doo. So the first of those is blood being pushed from the left atrium through that valve and into the left ventricle. And then the second of those beats is the blood then being pushed back out and through the aorta, which you'll see has lots of branches on it and there'll be a whole load more further down the body. And that is blood being pushed out of the heart, round the body, and it supplies all the body tissues with the oxygen and uh, eventually glucose and other things from our digestive system as well. So that's the heart structure. You need to know the names of the chambers, the right and left atrium, the right and left ventricle, you also need to know where these four valves are located. Now, the function of these valves, the purpose of these valves is to make sure that blood is pushed through in only one direction. So if you look at the shape of it, when this atrium squeezes, it can push blood quite easily through that valve. But the shape of it, if blood does, when the blood gets pumped out that way, it will not go back the way that it came because of the shape of this valve. All that would happen is blood would get kind of stuck here and here, and then eventually it will make its way out the only way that it can, which is through that valve, which it can push through. So valves allow blood to travel in one direction only. We can sometimes say that they prevent backflow. They stop blood flowing back the wrong way. And you can see where they're located. It's all about ensuring that blood is following the correct path through the heart. OK. So this is a more simplified version. This is more similar to what you'll have in your notes. So we can see, again, the exact same parts here. The vena cava, there's only one this time just for simplicity. The vena cava is the vein bringing blood in. We've got the right atrium through the valve to the right ventricle and through the valve into the pulmonary artery and then in the second, when it comes back from the lungs, it's coming in through the pulmonary vein into the left atrium, down through the valve into the left ventricle, 
and then out through the valve into the aorta. Now, one thing that you'll notice here as well is we've got this question here. The left side of the heart is much thicker than the right side of the heart. Why is that? Have a little think about that. Okay, the reason why this side is thicker, think about where each side of the heart is actually pumping blood to. So the right side of the heart is only having to pump blood as far as the lungs. And there's lungs right next to the heart. They're on either side of the heart. So it's not really having to pump the blood very far to reach its destination. So in other words, this muscle, if we think of the heart as being a muscle, which it is, um, but think about your muscles. When you, if, if you were working out, if you were doing weights at the gym, for example, when you work a particular muscle group, it gets bigger, it gets thicker because it's being worked harder. Um, so there's more growth occurs in those tissues. Now, this side of the heart is not having to contract very, very much to be able to get the blood out to the lungs. But this side of the heart is <clears throat> having to pump blood all the way out and around the body as far as your big toe, for example. So it's got a harder job. It's having to pump the blood a lot further. So because of that, this side of the heart muscle is working harder um, and therefore it is bigger, it gets thicker okay, to be able to do its job. And actually that's a good thing because if it's thicker, it can be more powerful with a single contraction. So it can do more work um, with almost less effort. All right. Now the heart itself, as I've just said, it is a muscle, it's a living tissue and it needs blood. Um, it needs all the oxygen, all the nutrients, all the glucose, that kind of stuff that any other cell that's working hard would need. Now, the problem is the blood, as we've just said, it's doodum, doodum. It's not staying in the heart for very long. It's getting pumped out pretty quickly. And that is not enough time for things like oxygen and glucose to diffuse into the heart muscle to keep it alive. So outside the heart, we can see here, so the aorta is this tube here. So blood has just been pumped out of the heart through the aorta. And the aorta has some branches very small arteries that come off it, which we call the coronary arteries. And these ones go around the outside of the heart muscle. They're very narrow, which means that the speed that the blood's traveling through them is a lot slower, okay? Because there's, le there's less uh, diameter of a tube for the blood to be able to squeeze through. So it slows it down. So they're under quite high pressure because of that. So this blood passing out of the aorta and then back around the outside of the heart, uh, this is what supplies the heart with oxygen and glucose and things like that that it needs. So the coronary arteries supply the heart muscle with blood, with the oxygen and glucose that the, the heart needs. Um, why does it need such a good supply of glucose and oxygen? Well, if you think about it, it is a muscle. It's working hard. It needs a lot of energy. In fact, it's probably the hardest working part of your body because it is beating an extraordinary number of times a day. And you can work this out yourself. If your resting heart rate was say 60 beats per minute, and that's just resting, then how many beats does the heart make in an hour, in a day, in a year, in a lifetime? It's a huge number of beats. So it's a very, very active muscle. Um, and because of that, it needs a really good supply of glucose and oxygen so that it doesn't stop being able to work. So hopefully that makes sense. The coronary artery, narrower tube, slowing the blood down, and that allows it to supply the heart with blood, with oxygen and glucose. These are very narrow tubes. And as a result of that, they are susceptible to getting blocked when people have a poor diet, high levels of obesity. Fat can start to clog these muscles. Uh, sorry, these arteries, and the result of that is that it can block the blood supply to the heart. And that's the kind of thing that can lead to a heart attack um, and coronary heart disease, which is a bit of a problem in Scotland. So controlling our diet can prevent that kind of problem. But you can see, hopefully, these are very, very important arteries, supplying the heart with um, oxygen, glucose, through blood. And that is it. So not too long, um, but hopefully that has covered the important part. So you need to be able to identify the four chambers of the heart, our left and right atriums and ventricles. 
We need to know where the four valves are. We don't need to know their names, but we need to know where the four valves are in the heart and what they're there for. So stopping backflow of blood, keeping it flowing in the right direction. We should be able to describe the flow of blood around the body and through the heart, the order uh, of the chambers that it's passing through, uh, and then on its way to the lungs, back to the heart, out to the body, back to the heart. We've also explained why the left side of the heart is thicker than the right, because it's working harder. Uh, it's got to pump the blood a lot further than the right side does. We should also know the four main blood vessels that are connected to the heart. So the vena cava, the big vein that brings blood back to the heart, then we've got our pulmonary artery taking blood away to the lungs, pulmonary vein bringing it back from the lungs, and then the big aorta which takes blood all the way around the body. And then finally, the purpose of the coronary artery to supply the heart muscle with oxygen and glucose uh, because it's a good blood supply. So that's it. Um, in the next lesson, we are going to look at the different types of blood vessel and how their structure is suited to their function.